My name is Franz Walker. I live in Woodbury, Tennessee. When I moved to the United States in 2001, I was 13. It was right before 9-11. Uh, we came initially for my older brother's graduation. We ended up staying permanently. I come from a big military family. I have six out of my seven brothers, including me, joined the military. Dad always referred to it as the family business. Captain James Alexander Walker, he was in the Revolutionary War fought in North Carolina. Grandpa served in Vietnam, Dad served during Desert Storm. Uh, my older brother Frankie, who was killed in Iraq, uh, inspired me to join. It was an unusual vehicle that they spotted. They were in a convoy, Frankie dismounted, went up to the vehicle, uh, asked for his interpreter, and then the vehicle blew up. And it only injured him, and that was it. The rest of his platoon didn't get injured because Frankie went out there by himself. He told everybody else to remain in the vehicle. You know, he was a lead from the front kind of guy, so he wouldn't put his guys through anything that he wouldn't put himself through. And I served for six years, and then after I was injured, my two younger brothers joined, Kevin and Mitch. And then Josh, who's getting commissioned in December, and then Jake, who is just newly commissioned. So, uh, continue on the family legacy, so it's pretty cool. We deployed to Iraq in 2010, in November of 2010. We did a 12 month deployment. It was a pretty easy deployment until about June 6th. That's when we got rocketed. We ended up losing about six guys from rockets coming into our FOB. It was about 5.30 in the morning. So then uh, I went to uh, back to the United States after that, a 12 month deployment. And then I was lucky enough to get selected to go to airborne school. So I went to airborne school en route to Italy. I was there for about, I would say, not even 60 days. And they were like, hey, we're deploying to Afghanistan. On the day I was shot in September 29th, 2012, we were just conducting a standard traffic control point. So we had the Ash uh, Afghan National Army assist us with getting people out of the vehicles and talking to us we had a couple of them turn on us. So they ended up shooting us. Sergeant First Class Daniel Metcalf, who was killed that day, took some rounds to the ribs and was able to return fire. And you know, ended up getting a silver star out of his service. I was standing right next to him. Uh, I was shot four times in the stomach, uh, which ended up shattering my right hip, which made me fall to the ground. <laughs> I wasn't able to stand, so I was able to crawl out of the open. I was, we're in an open area, so I was trying to crawl to cover. And that's when the second guy came around who just shot Kevin O'Rourke. He was ended up being killed. And then that guy came around and shot me in the back as I was crawling. The last thing we had learned before they arranged to send his dad and I to Germany was that he was classified as very seriously injured. They don't usually bring the family to Germany unless they're not expecting them to survive. Having family members there to assist you in recovery not only helps you physically but it helps you mentally as well. You know having the ability to be there with him through that, you know, was healing for us and I believe for him too. I think he knew we were there. Ended up spending three years at Walter Reed after that happened. That's when my, the real struggle started, the real hard, long road to recovery. And, you know, I wasn't able to do it by myself. I had a great community, family. And then especially when he got back to Walter Reed and being able to be there you know, to encourage him, keep him positive. I believe Luke Swings has a very important role in recovery of service members. My personal tie with Luke Swings is just their connection with getting my father and mother and brothers to DC to assist me, also flying me to when I need new prosthetics and stuff like that to DC instead of driving 13 plus hours. I was very fortunate. I got all that time with my dad too, so he was able to come. November 2nd is when my dad had a heart attack and passed away. That was really hard because uh, me and my dad were pretty close. And it's been, you know, looking back, I didn't know I only had three years left with my dad. So it's kind of cool that I was able to spend that time with him. 
I got a second chance at life that my brother didn't. So I'm trying to live every moment to the fullest that I can for him, for me. And my purpose, I kind of believe, is to continue like his legacy and make sure he's not forgotten. So every time I'm able to share my story, I always try my best to include him in my story because that's kind of where I, my origins pretty much start at his end.